do that do? Hello, everybody. Oh, good. You're chatting right away and I can see it. Oh, shoot. It's been so long since I've been on here that I'm forgetting. Okay, I see you guys. Yay, I like when you start writing hello. It feels like forever since I've been on. Oh, my God. Hello, Kelly. I'm going to give a few more seconds, minutes, whatever. I'm going to lower my volume because I can hear myself. I think that's good. And I would like to see everyone who's saying hi. Don't forget to post um, if this is your first time joining me on Facebook Live and um, where you're tuning in from. So I like to see all the different the different areas. I'm going to take my own voice out of my own head because I don't want to hear myself anymore. And it's been so long. It feels like I haven't done this in forever. I was trying to set up and I totally forgot what buttons to press and all of that. So. Everybody, welcome. For those of you who have not joined in before, my name is Deborah Hanlon, and I am known as an intuitive medium, which means I'm able to connect with people who have crossed on. Um, every time I describe myself and introduce myself as that, I kind of cringe a little bit inside because for those of you who know me, know that I am almost like an anti-medium. I probably wouldn't believe in this if I didn't do it myself. But what the deceased have taught me is a better way to live. And I have now, in my own mind, I have two roles. And one of my jobs and one of my roles or my passions is to be able to provide proof for the living that the deceased have consciousness that goes on after their death and that they're fine and they're good and they're okay. And that helps a lot of people here with your grief, which I love. And I love because as the name of my book behind me is called In the Presence of Proof. And that is because I am in the presence of proof of an afterlife literally every single day of my life because of all of you. Everyone who sits with me who has a mediumship appointment will will get that proof. And through you, I get the proof as well because I, I know I don't know you and I know I don't know your people who have crossed and yet I do totally know them. So on one level, that's my job and my passion, but that has morphed into so much more because when people leave me, leave my office, um, I always wonder, like, how did that help? Was that good? Was that helpful? Did they get what they needed? And on some level, yes, they did. But what I started to notice over 10 years ago is that we still have to live here and we still have to move on and, and nothing moves us and morphs us and transforms us as powerfully and strongly as experiencing a death of a loved one. And what that does is it puts us on this journey in life and it it really gets us to to buckle down. It gets us to put our head on straight and really go after what we want. Um, and I want to be a part of that process too. So my other role and my other hat, if you will, is really breathing life into the living dead. So I can, in some ways, resurrect the deceased by proving to the living that they still have awareness and um, consciousness of everything we're doing, that they're okay. Tons of closure happens with the deceased, but then I want to resurrect the living as well, because I know a lot of us are just moving around and we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what we want, but we all feel... <laughs> Every human I've ever met, we often feel there's something missing. There's something more. We want to search and there's a level of unhappiness and that we want to keep searching and reaching and all that. And I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with the psychology of that. I'm obsessed with what I now know is the energy of that. What is it about our own consciousness that we can adopt and learn here in physical life so that we move forward? So that's a lot of where my work is moving towards. So for those of you who don't know me, I come on Facebook Live on Mondays so that I can answer your generalized questions about the other side, about the here and now. Um, we'll talk a little bit about my book. I have people who have written questions. I'm going to answer 
your questions tonight, but I'm not taking any personal intuitive questions and I'm not connecting with anyone's loved ones on the other side in this format. So um, I know a lot of people want that personal one-on-one, but I will give you all, I think, bigger tools (laughs) to help you help yourself. And that's all in terms of energy. So I'm seeing all this stuff scrolling through. um, And so many of you are writing congratulations on the engagement. So let's Let's forget about resurrecting the living dead and all of that stuff. Let's talk about that. That was pretty exciting. Where is it? I don't know how to like do this. Do you see it? (laughs) Let me tell you, it is not easy to surprise me about anything. I always have a hunch, a feeling, a gut, you know, someone can look at me the one way and I'll know like, oh, this is what they're doing or, oh, this is happening. It is very difficult to surprise me. And let me tell you, he proposed literally at midnight um, in front of a house full of guests. And well, (laughs) for those of you who know me, you know me well. So for those of you who don't, I hope anyone who's told you to come tune in, I hope they told you I curse a lot as well. Because when it all happened, I literally like left my body. I was, I, I don't really remember what happened. But he said, I said, what? I don't even remember what I said. I don't remember anything. And he said, oh, I do. I remember what you said. And I'm like, what did I say? He said, are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) That's apparently my reaction to when he got down on his knee, choked up in front of a house full of people, knowing that I'd flip out over this because we just have had such a history, seven and a half year history together. Um... And that was my response. And when he said that, I kind of giggled. I'm like, I don't remember that, but I that sounds exactly like something I would say. So that was my response. He said I didn't even say yes or no or anything. And he was like, uh, that's not really what I wanted to hear. He didn't say yes. And I was like, oh, well, I took the ring. So that meant yes. So thank you. That was super exciting. Um, I want to go over a couple of things that people have addressed, and I'm just scrolling through your messages very quickly. Um, oh, I'm gonna, I see one from Rachel. So in a minute, I'm going to answer something, I think, from um, Rachel in a moment. I'll, I see that you have written a lot. But um, those of you who have purchased my book, we're gonna add, I'm going to address some of the questions that you've been coming to me with tonight. I know Melissa in upstate New York has some questions about the book or wanted to discuss some things, so we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, a woman named Candace has reached out to me and really wrote me something nice that totally stri- strikes a chord in all of us about kind of how to apply that whole like positive thinking crap, which is crap when we're not feeling happy and we have to pretend we're happy. It's crap. So I really want to address what Candace had said. Um, for those of you who know me, I have a center in Newburgh, New York, and I teach a lot of workshops and I have completely added a lot of workshops finally in this new year. Um, so vision board, I've done one already. I love it. I think it's so powerful. And my next one is on February 17th and I'm closing that out at 20 people. And I don't know how many we have uh, reserved now. So it's a very intimate time with me where I teach you about energy, teach you how to visualize. Um, I will do, uh, exercises with you so you can understand why you feel scattered and why our, Focused intention is so important and what all that means. So that's February 17th. And you can log on to my website, deborahhanlin.com, for all the information on that. My energy awareness workshop, I am bringing it back. I have not taught it in three years. It is an intensive, intensive personal development workshop over six weeks. And we meet three weekends over the course of six weeks. So you're on a weekend, off a weekend, on a weekend, off a weekend, on a weekend. So for six weeks, um, you want to move and shift and change some stuff. That is the workshop uh, for you, or that is the whole series for you. That will develop into my own brand of energy healing because I love Reiki and I love all these energy healings, but none of them completely resonate. So I teach my way of energy healing, which means I will help you the healer tap into the way you heal because I can teach the way I heal, but that might might not be the way you heal. So my series for energy awareness, you must start at level one and um, that'll be 
it'll be four series over the course of a couple of years, actually. So energy awareness is going to be added to my calendar. I take a very limited amount of people with that, somewhere between 12 and 15, maybe one or two more, uh, depending on the makeup of the group once I see the class schedule. So all that's coming up. And let's get down to the nitty gritty. Isn't that the guy that says, um, what is, who says that? It's some trivia show. So let me address what you're writing. And I'm just reminding you, one, if you're tuning in for the first time, just type in where you're uh, tuning in from. And if this is your first time, and um, I'm not taking any personal intuitive questions, meaning like, am I going to get a new job? Is, you know, I'm not answering that type of questions. This is more broad range questions that, that everyone will receive information by your question. So it's not tailored just specifically. But Rachel, I just saw, said, I had a reading once before. You wrote Evie. Didn't mention it during the visit. Sometime after I asked about... I don't have my glasses on. Uh, asked about baby and you said, May, I'm pregnant now and expected in May. And her name is Evelyn, a.k.a. Evie. For short, this name was chosen way before I've known about you. Oh, my God. I love that. I thought you had a question for me. Um, and I, th I thought you said something about evil because I can't have my, um, my, my glasses on. So I wanted to address the concept of evil is what I thought you are bringing up. So this is so exciting. First of all, Rachel, congratulations. And congratulations on this little energy, Evie, who clearly knew someone on the other side knew she was coming into your life. So that is amazing. And I love stories like that because I always say, like, you can't make that shit up is basically how it works. You can't make that up. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, Maria, hello, I see you there. Uh, show you the ring again, Kelly. I don't know if I can. Is that better? Is that happening? My hand, I have like this thing. I, I don't, I, I am who I am. It's fine. But um, I have like ET fingers, like alien hands because I'm tall and I have really skinny fingers with huge knuckles. So all the pictures of the ring, I try to leave my whole hand out. So I just do this. So that, yeah, very exciting. Super exciting. Show the ring, show the ring. Oh my gosh. Now I'm seeing all this. <laughs> There's nothing better than woman power, I swear. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I, Kelly, cursing is just making your words more fun. I agree. I agree. Okay, Susan. Susan Page is, let me post your thing here. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Hold on one moment, please. Oh, my God, you have no idea. If, if you could only see, I know I'm moving all this stuff around. Okay, let's get that, rid of that, get rid of that. Oh, yeah, up there, uh, I have a YouTube channel. So all of my broadcasts here and anything I'll, else I add goes directly to my YouTube channel. So you can look at that. Susan writes, when someone dies, do they transition to the other side immediately? And I love this question. I have done this with full awareness for almost 18 years. This summer, it'll be 18 years that I have full awareness that I'm able to connect and hear people who've crossed. Looking back at my life, I've been doing it my whole life, but real true proof, 18 years. And I've never met an energy that did not transition immediately. Um, I'm always boggled by a lot of times I hear, a lot of times on paranormal shows, I'm always boggled how people say, oh, they can't find the light, and they're very confused, they still think they're alive. I don't know what that is about, because I have never had an energy express that to me. And I have had absolutely any type of passing you can imagine come across my my office floor or, or um, events and galleries and things. And no one's ever said, oh, my God, Deb, I need your help. I can't find the light. I'm lost. And that uh, bothers me that I hear people because um, that's that's stressful. That's like scary as hell because. You know how scary it is to be, like, lost in a store. I'm a grown adult, but I'm, like, panicked when I can't find people. So, um, no, they do not uh, – they they're not in limbo. They're not confused. Um, pretty much cross instantly. Sometimes they have crossed even before their body has ceased to function. So heart can still be beating. Brain can still have function. And they're, they could have left their body. I hear that a lot. Uh, and they will instantly feel peace and peaceful, and they will know they've crossed because they are feeling a level of peace 
and completion that none of us here can fully comprehend until we cross over. So I believe a lot of times humans like to to apply human logic to something, meaning our ourselves in spirit, that is nothing human-like at all. It is it is way more expansive, way bigger than we can conceive. So we can't apply human logic to a spiritual event or a spiritual experience. We just can't. When we discuss these things, we have limitations because we're using human words and language, which creates limitations. But they absolutely do transition to the other side immediately in all of my experiences. Ooh, Vanessa, thank you. That's a great question. Um, Terry, Federico, thank you for that. Uh, Mallory Jackson, is. Um, she wrote Emotional Bloodbath, and that is a response to how my energy awareness workshop that I was talking about before, the six-week course. It is an emotional bloodbath. Um, I will poke every dormant... <laughs> emotional energy stuckness in you and for a reason for a higher purpose for a great intention for total healing um in a way that is very gentle but very very supportive and and no joke like you can't deny it so yeah an emotional bloodbath there is mallory's words to describe how my energy awareness energy transformation awareness works and part one is getting started march 30th so we'll we'll put that on the website very very soon um ba, ba, ba. cornwall new york oh you're friends with Lori faith very cool my soon-to-be niece oh my god i don't know if gk's logged on yet because he's kind of upstairs i have a cave boy that's sick tonight so he's kind of monitoring him but so i didn't see if greg uh tuned in but yeah i guess Lori jean's gonna soon to be my niece now um, so welcome, Faith. Thank you. Let's see. Ah, very good, Julie. That's good to hear. I'm looking for questions. Ah, okay. Here's a good one. And I'm just reminding everyone, I don't take personal intuitive questions in this format. So, um, if you're asking like, what's going to happen career wise for me or this or that, this isn't the format for that because I want to reach more of you at once. And if I answer personal intuitive questions, I'm only going to get to maybe, maybe, I don't know, 20 of you say throughout the night. Meanwhile, the information I can give will hit all 100 of you plus. So, um, Carla, I like this question. What determines if you have luck on your lifetime or not? So Carla, the concept of luck is a state of being, a state of mind, a state of consciousness. If you believe you are lucky, you are attracting every experience that mimics, reflects, or resonates with the concept of luck. So you will reflect back what you believe with everything. If I've heard people go, oh, you know what? I'm that person. I always win um, contests. And what happens? They always win contests. I have people that know, like, I get every job on that first interview, and they get every job on that first interview. There's a lot of different core beliefs and thoughts, and if you believe them strong enough, that is what you attract. So luck is another one of those concepts. If you similarly or conversely believe you are the most unlucky human, you're going to vibrate and attract the most unlucky situations. Now, pretty much the, the entire population, pretty much, or the civilized world, I should say, uh, whatever that hell that's called anymore, because who the hell knows what's called civilized. Um, but anyway, I won't go there. But we all have moments of luck and moments of not luck very much varies on which one we pay attention to. Are you only focusing on the time where you are completely luck, lucky, luckful, <laughs> full of luck, and, and therefore you keep uh, expanding that consciousness? Or are you only focused on the times when you're not lucky? Either way you go, any side that you focus on, you are going to see more of that. 
In my book, I kind of just talk about this, discuss that in a different format. I have um, exercises that I ask you to do throughout the book. And one of them is to focus on a kangaroo. And I know a lot of you, I've gotten so many messages, emails, letters about this very uh, exercise that everyone loves. In the Northeast, where is where I'm based out of, um, where I have most of my followers, if you will, it is very rare for us here to see a kangaroo, have references to kangaroo. It's it's not part of our everyday life. If you said um, pine trees where I am, or if you said almost anything else, like cardinals, that's a very common bird around this area. Um, but if we were in Australia, kangaroos would be something that, that is very much in your, your field of reference often for one reason or another. But my, my exercise says focus on kangaroos. Give yourself 24 hours to just focus on kangaroos and watch how often the awareness of kangaroos pops up into your life. And people are sharing, like, I thought the exercise was stupid and it wasn't happening. And then all of a sudden, my grandson was playing on the floor and he was trying to call, I think it was a mouse, and he mistakenly called a mouse a kangaroo, which even he knew wasn't a kangaroo, but he couldn't reach the words or find the words for kangaroo. And she was like in complete disbelief because she was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, yes, because you were focused on it. So the whole thing, what determines if you have luck or not, really comes down to which side are you going to pay attention to? I've had several things today, just today, that I couldn't attribute to complete luck and how fortunate I am. And I've had several things today that I could focus on that I can go, oh my God, I'm so unlucky. So which one, which way do I want to go? Today, I really haven't focused on being so lucky, but I haven't focused on being unlucky either. So um, I've been kind of neutral, kind of not focused on either one. My, I had to pick up my son early from school. He's sick. He doesn't feel well upstairs. Um, their rooms were a mess. I mean, I, all those things could be like, oh, why me? But I had so many other things, like I got first online at a store today and things moved, moved through uh, very effortlessly. And because my son was sick, I didn't have to drive all the way 45 minutes to Rhinebeck, where I love Rhinebeck. Um, I didn't have to drive, so I wasn't harried. So long story short, but a very important concept is which one are you deciding to focus on is really what it's going to come down to. That's a great question. Okay, let's see. Let me see. I see this one from Kat. And I really do try to answer um, really just one question per person. But for some reason, I've had nights where all of a sudden I'll pick three from the same person, but I don't even know it's the same person. But I, I really do try to get to each one of you as much as possible. So um, don't yell at me if I answer someone twice and you not. Um, okay, let's see. My question is, since everything is pretty much planned, what about accidents where you die? Is this planned? Yes. So, um, so everything is planned, but it's not, um, again, it's, it's, we have a little bit of a lack with human words and concepts. So we all came into this lifetime with a lesson, if you will, or a theme or several lessons and themes that the universe knows that's, that's our lesson in this lifetime. And so it kind of co-conspires with everyone around you to give you that lesson. But the way we get those lessons can change. So if our lesson in this lifetime was about abundance, we can experience abundance through having an abundance of wealth and love and happiness, or we can have the experience of abundance through lack and and. I'm in the middle of a show. Oh, no. My son just walked in. Hold on. Maybe later. <laughs> I thought I thought it was my other son. I thought he was, like, throwing up or something, and I was going to bolt. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so we can, <laughs> so we can uh, receive our lessons one way or another. We can have an abundance of illness, an abundance of loss, an abundance of whatever. So... It depends on how you're going to get the lesson. And we do have free will in that lesson. With that, when someone dies, 
I have learned, and I shared this in my book, of the exact person who passed that really taught me, like, Deb, when it's our time, it is our time, no matter what. And the entire universe co-conspires to create that soul's expiration. Now, of course, in our human minds, when we have anyone who passes, it wasn't their time in our minds. Even if they're 99 years old, we're all of a sudden like, no, it's not ready. It's not their time. But in us, on their soul's time, it is their time. So with accidents, we can change, or with any way we pass, we can change how we pass, just like we can change how we receive our lessons, but we cannot change when we pass. So um, we really don't, not one of us on this planet, have control over the quantity of life that we're going to live, but every single one of us has control Every single one of us tuning in, I shouldn't, you know, there are people in parts of the world that really don't have choice because of where they're living, their demographics. But um, we do have choice over the quality of life we live. So we really need to focus on what quality of life am I giving to myself? Um, How are you contributing to the quality of your life? You really have to get honest with yourself. You know, I have to get honest with the quality of my life. I live a wonderful life, thank goodness. But, you know, I I, I love sugar. <laughs> so, like, that's really not contributing to the quality of my life. The fact that I, like, really haven't exercised, like, well and, like, really done a good job exercising affects my quality of life. And that's on me. So we all have to get, in, you know, really honest on how are we living our best quality of life. Because none of us have certainty over the quantity of life. Even if you live a perfectly healthy, wonderful life, that doesn't mean anything. I've read many, many people that are completely healthy and then pass for one reason or another. So we want to really focus on our quality of life. So I hope that answers that. And then for those of you who are just tuning in, we have a lot have joined in. Um, Just type in where you're tuning in from. And if this is your first time tuning in and... Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Here's a good one from Susan. Do our loved ones greet us when we die? And what about our dogs that died? All pets, all dogs go to heaven. All pets go to heaven. We're reunited with them. You'll be reunited with pets that you didn't even remember. Like if you had them when you were two, you will be, re- you'll be reunited with those pets. Um, and of course our loved ones greet us when we pass, of course, uh, here's where it gets pretty wild and expansive because again, humans like to attach human concept to the afterlife. And that's in my opinion, very similar to if you could ask a genie, anything in the world, (laughs) anything, you could have anything. And your limited self goes, oh, wow, I just, I just want to, um, I just want to pay my bills. That's what you're going to get. You're just going to pay your bills, which isn't a bad thing, but that's what you're going to get. It's very limited. The afterlife is like that genie saying, everyone, everything, every desire, dream, hope you've ever wanted, you know, the, the promise of an entire abundant life is available to you. So humans, we limit the whole concept. So when we meet someone on a bus, on a plane, on a train, your coworkers, um, quick meetings, long-term friends, anyone who sits with me in my office, your doctors, just think of any and every single interaction you have with people, the, the cashier at a store, every person you come in contact with, your loved ones and their loved ones have connected on the other side. And it's either because or when we connect here, they meet up, or sometimes they meet up, which is why we connect here. So when we talk about we're all one, that is a concept that is larger and greater than anyone can really conceive. We will meet our ancestors, people we've never met, and we will know exactly who they are, exactly who they are, as will your people because you're tuning in to me, your people and my people will meet up and you will know, oh, look, there's Deborah's grandmother. Oh, look, there's Deborah's brother. That's how expansive it is, which we can't, we can't even comprehend that really, but it's way larger. So of course you will 
connect with the people that you know immediately, but it's, it's way, way, way bigger and grander than what we can conceive. Um, Elizabeth, how do we know our loved ones are sending us signs? That's a great question. Sometimes right off the bat, we don't. Really an annoying answer. Um, I, this is all I do for a living. I eat, breathe, sleep, read everything about this. This is all I really care about is talking about this, learning about it, developing it, helping people develop it. And sometimes, a lot of times, I miss the signs. I forget. I'm not aware. Um, that's either because I'm so distraught over something that I just can't see my way through, like the fog of grief or whatever. Um, others, it's just that we're human. We just will miss over a lot. So just because you don't feel them around or feel like you're seeing or receiving signs from them, that does not mean they're not doing it, and it doesn't mean they're not around. Similarly, when I tell people that, people go, oh my gosh, now are they upset that I'm not getting their signs? No. They're not upset at all. They know and they remember what it was like to be human and that sometimes we cannot, we're just not open. We can't perceive them. So that's sometimes we just can't. How do we know? It's very simple. I always say, you'll know a sign when it's how you feel when you receive it. If you are, say, a very skeptical minded person or very, very logical minded person, There'll be those moments where you'll go, hmm, I wonder if that was so-and-so. And if it stopped you for a nanosecond, whatever the sign was, it probably was a sign. If you just know it in that moment, like you're a full believer and you feel them, that's a sign. So what you feel is real. So that's how you know. Trust that. I have a lot of people that say, Deborah, I don't know. I think I'm making it up. I say, oh, you think you made up? a sign from your father. Yeah, I think I made it up because I really want to hear from him. And I will tell that person in my office, make it up right now. Make up the feeling that you had when that sign occurred. And they'll always go, I, I can't. And then I'll say, exactly. So that's the other thing. You, We can't make up these signs. We can't make it happen. I'm a medium and I can't, although I'm saying this and I can start to feel them already, my own right in this moment, but this doesn't always happen. Like, I can't make my brother who passed materialize and, and come forward. I can't make Greg's father who passed just sit down and talk to me and I have that feeling. Not for my own people. It doesn't work. It works just like everyone else for my own people. Why? Because my logical mind will filter out like, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I have that logical mind too. So really go based, Elizabeth, on how you feel when you get it. Having said that, there's no limitation to how signs can come through. It could be obvious. It could be their name is the, um, you were thinking about a person on the other side and the waiter that comes up to you has their name on their name tag. It could be on a license plate. It could be a song that plays. It could be that rainbow, the, the cardinal. Um, oh my God, there's trillions and trillions and trillions. You could smell them. I had someone in my office just the other day that instantly smelled cigarette smoke. That's a common thing that her mom was a smoker, so she smelled that. Um, 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 um. So there's really no, there's no way you can't not. It just depends on which one you, the receiver of the signs, is most plugged into. I get lately a lot of my own personal signs through license plates, which I feel like I always tell Greg, I'm like, I kind of have like this OCD with license plates. I have to like see the license plates. And I'm not asking for other people's people. I'm asking for mine in those moments. And there it is on a license plate. But that's not the only way I receive signs. So basically, I'm telling you, Elizabeth, to trust your gut. What you feel is real. Um, oh, I like this one, too. And don't forget, for those of you who are tuning in, just to type in where you're tuning in from. And if this is your first time, I like after afterwards, I go through all these, um, your posts, because I like to see what people are interested in and what you're interacting, because I can't really do that now. I can't speak and read all these um, messages that are scrolling by, but I do afterwards. So I like to see where everyone's tuning in from and if this is your first time. So... Um, also, while you're at it, too, as I'm answering this next question, I, I want you to 
to help me prepare and, and kind of narrow down my work as I move forward, really think about how, how can I help you? How, what do you need help with? What are your challenges? What do you want to learn more about? And I suspect a large majority of you are looking for solving grief and connecting with your loved ones. So that makes sense. Um, but a lot of you can say, I have this block on relationships or I don't know how to get out of this career stuckness or whatever it is. I don't know. So I would like to hear your feedback on, you know, how can I help you? What challenges are you being faced that you need guidance on and help um, in a generalized form? And that way I can start formulating classes that are surrounding with those that topic and those topics. So why do spirits of people you really don't even know come forward? Yep. For example, during a reading, I had a guy who liked my sister and died in a motorcycle accident, kept stepping up, and I don't know who he is. Nancy, that's a great question. Um, sometimes when I'm, you know, as the medium, I sit there and go, what the heck? Like, dude, like, you have to stop. Like, she doesn't even know you. And I get, like, annoyed for the sitter. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. This person is, like, totally, in some ways, photobombing or energy bombing your reading. Um, I believe most of the time it is because they need a message to get to that person and they know that's their opportunity. So that that's one reason. Um, sometimes it's just because, like, say the day before you were talking about this person, the day before your session, um, you were talking about that person with someone that kind of, I say, I call that they popped up into your energy field because you had a discussion about them. Um, other times it could be their energy is just loud and noticeable. I find those annoying sometimes because I know how people feel. I've had mediums read me and like, I'll have an uncle that I didn't even know pop up and I'm like, ah, I don't really care about him right now. Um, and I tell people when they sit with me, I don't want that to happen. And I will try my best to, to tell that person, give me the message and then move on. Sometimes it works. Sometimes they don't. Um, but it's, it, it's sometimes it's just that they're louder and for some reason they're in your energy field, but there's, it's very rare that there's, um, they're like desperate or anything like that. It's, it's usually not a thing like that. And before I go on to another question, I want to address, uh, Candace, who I mentioned earlier, she wrote to me on Instagram. Let me pull it up. And the gist of her message was I had made a post on my Instagram. And if you're not on Instagram, it's right. Nope. It's right here. <laughs> um, find me on Instagram. I, I'm really bad at Twitter. I hate Twitter. I don't know how to do that. But Instagram, I love because it, there's no drama on Instagram. You really get to kind of follow people who are either inspiring or helpful or doing good work in the world. And it's not like those posts like, mother ever, I hate the world. And, you know, it's not that passive aggressive post, at least the ones that I'm seeing aren't. So it just feels like such a happier vibe. And I'm really getting into Instagram. So Every day I will post either a quote or just like a little tidbit of something, you know, real quick, real brief for you to reflect on. And I posted, what is your intention? And I wrote about on Sunday nights how it's really important to mentally set up the next week for ourselves. I know Monday morning comes around or Sunday night comes around and everybody starts to get into that like, work anxiety slash depression. Ugh, I got a lot going on. I don't feel like waking up and you know, you get back into the grind and you get anxious. I love what I do. And I still find myself getting a little like, oh, I have so much to go to happen this week. I hope it's all going to happen right. And they have to calm yourself down and really get into the habit of setting an intention and seeing your week. So what I mean by that is Run through your Monday in your head. Go through, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to get dressed, I'm prepared, I have this meeting, I have this to do, um, ooh, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed about that. Like mentally and visually and emotionally go through every day. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, I, ooh, I get to come out of work early on Tuesday. Uh, oh, but I got to pick up the kids. Whatever your week is that you know about already play it out in your mind so that you are setting up your week energetically. It will calm you. Sometimes it makes you more anxious too because you're like, shit, I overbooked a day and oh my gosh. But then you're doing it in advance. So when it really does happen, your body's already prepared for it to be a little bit uh, overwhelmed and it's not as overwhelming when you actually go through it. So mentally prepare your week, set your intention for the week of 
of, you know what, as I go through the day, I realize I do have to get up 30 minutes early on such and such day, which I am really bad at. I will, I will pinch every last second I possibly can. I'm somebody I need to wash my hair every other day. But some of those days I'm like, okay, I can go two days. I'm going to put dry shampoo in my hair. And if it looks greasy, it's fine. Just so I can squeeze out like five more minutes in bed. I'm that person. But anyway, I digress. So set up your day. So Candace had written in that she said, every week I do try this. And by the time I get to the parking lot of work, I am aggravated. Um, she goes on about Friday. She spoke her mind at work. Um, but I'm just doing getting the gist. How can you plan your week and know what the outcome is going to be? I seriously feel I can't switch it up. All the positivity hasn't been helping. I'm very frustrated. So I'm, I love when people write this because that's a real world thing. We're all struggling with that. So it's not that we are even manipulating the week. Like Tuesday, I've got 14 people coming in and I'm, they're all, it's all going to be great. It's not necessarily that. It's see yourself and just mentally go through your week. As you get good at this, and it is a practice, you must practice it. And as you do, you'll start to all of a sudden notice, hmm, something comes up Wednesday afternoon. I'm using this as an example, too. Don't everyone, like, put in their subconscious that Wednesday afternoon is going to be tense in your life right now. So something comes up Wednesday afternoon. I feel, ooh, something, something. So you're kind of preparing yourself for what's to come. So when you're actually in the moment, it's not as bad. Every month when I open up my calendar for appointments, I sit with my calendar in front of me with Michelle and I go day by day and I feel my way through the month and I'll go, mm, I don't know, something with that Tuesday, don't book, don't book that 1.30 appointment. And then sure enough, something pops up that I need to be somewhere by two o'clock and had I had that appointment, it wouldn't have worked. So is, is it all the time? Is it perfect? No. Am I saying I'm not perfect? No. Um, but use it as a tool to help you understand and feel your way through your work. It takes practice. It takes work. I am not telling you to go through the week and say on a Tuesday, you know, you are getting reviewed and you're going to be nervous. I am not telling you to be like Pollyanna, like, Go me, yay, I'm the best teacher and my review's the best. If you're nervous, review your week and feel, God, I'm so nervous about that. Oh my God, I feel sick to my stomach. Whatever, allow yourself to sort of feel your way through it on that Sunday or whenever you choose to preview your week so that when you're in the moment of it, your body is already like, it's actually okay. All right, I'm prepared for this. And you get better and better. Then you'll start to feel your way through and you'll go, mm. Friday, Friday had a meltdown. Also, um, d like going back for a moment, don't pretend, don't pretend, don't pretend any emotion. I am completely against the whole fake it till you make it bullshit. I really am because your body knows that you're lying. So your body likes truth. It likes honesty. It knows what to do with truth and on truth and honesty. So admit to yourself, I'm totally scared shitless. I'm a complete nervous wreck. Okay, then you can walk through. You don't have to give yourself the false mantra. The positive mantras will come in time and you will actually resonate and begin to believe them. So that, Candace, I hope that helps you. Um, helps you set the intention for the week. My intention is um, to go through the week and feel as calm as possible. And be really appreciative of when your Friday comes along and it's time for, uh, it's time for celebration or the, just that you can run home in your yoga pants and eat Chinese food, which is what I like to do. So I hope that addresses that. And I'm just looking to Melissa's question. Um, Melissa had said that she has, um, questions about the book as well. So, Deborah, how do you communicate with kids or adults who cannot speak? Um, I love and find this unbelievably, unbelievably uh, intriguing. When I can connect with someone, child, adult, who is nonverbal, 
who is, for whatever reason, whether it's a traumatic brain injury, whether it's autism or other um, uh, cerebral palsy, whatever it is, whatever the, the issue is that someone is nonverbal, I can connect because I am connecting with consciousness. When I'm connecting to someone who's passed, I'm connecting to their consciousness, which doesn't die. The body dies. The body has limitations, but the essence of who we are never does. So I'm connecting with their essence. Um, I don't do this or haven't done this often. I mean, it has come through, but even babies that are super colicky, I can sort of like really connect with them and feel what's feeling, what's, what's going on with them. Um, people in a coma, whether it's medically induced or just because they're in a coma for, from an accident or whatever, I can connect with them because their consciousness is still existing. So it is very similar to connecting with someone who has passed. It's the same way. Pretty fascinating. Uh, let's see. Bobby. Bobby, Bobby. Along with our loved ones that have passed, will we be reunited with our pets? Absolutely. Pets, of course. Pets are energy. Pets are our are, are loves. So absolutely, we will be reconnected with any pet that we've ever had. And pets that we didn't even um, know or remember. It could be a pet that we had when we were two and we don't remember them. Uh, ooh, Kelly, this is a great one too. Kelly Donahue, Kelly Cleveland, I should say. Will you ever tell anyone bad news? Well, I told my ex-husband I was getting a divorce. I think that might have been bad news. <laughs> Actually, maybe not. Maybe he was like, you know what? It all worked out in the end. But um, yes, I de definitely have told people bad news. Um, however, I feel like if something is coming through a session, there's no such thing as bad news. What do I mean? One of my favorite stories, I mean, this happens like on a monthly basis, but um, one of my favorite stories was very, very early on when I was learning how to do all of this. I had a friend and she has a very, very, very old school Italian mother. And her daughter, my friend, was telling her mother about what I do. And her mother was like, no, 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 don't believe it, don't believe it. And she was like, you know, putting like the evil eye and protect the, or the horn to protect her from me. And, you know, and, and she laughed and she was like, oh, my God, my mom thinks you're like complete evil, don't listen to you, whatever. And I am fine with that. If you think that, you think that I can't change people's opinions. But I had said to her, I said, listen, your mom is going to have some sort of um, ovarian or gynecological issue, and she has to get it looked at. If she gets it looked at, she'll be in good hands, but if she won't, it won't be good. She tells her mother this. Her mother flips out. Oh, my God, you know, sign of the cross, rosaries, prayers, candles in the church, you name it. I'm not joking either. And we kind of got a giggle out of it over, like, how intense her mom, like, was like, no. Well... Little did we know, her mom listened to me, went to her doctor, they found an issue, and because she went when she went, it was fine. They were able to take care of it, but had she not gone early, it would have been too late. So in that case, it sounded really, really like bad news, but it wasn't. So I believe the other side uh, warns us of things that we can change. If we can't change something, like when someone's going to pass, we can't change it. You know, her mom clearly was not supposed to pass at that time. So would she have died from this? She wouldn't have died from this because why? Because this was 15 years ago and it's, she hasn't passed since still. But she would have had very bad sicknesses, a lot of pain, long time, you know, issues going on and on. So we were able to thwart those things. So I now don't look. Oh, and by the way, after this, that mother invited me to take my three sons over for a big pasta dinner. She wanted to thank me and she fed us pasta and my kids still don't, haven't stopped talking about the, the lady with the, she served them butter noodles and apparently her butter noodles are way better than mine. And I always think of butter noodles and her mom. So she turned around with me being you know, close to Satan and thanked me, which was very nice. But I don't think there's such thing as bad news. I think it's something that if we can be told about it, they will be able to thwart it and change it. If they can't, they won't and they won't say it. I've told people, oh, you got to check your tires, the brakes, this and that. So uh, that's that's my take on bad news. Uh, let's see. 
When someone um, passes, are they met by someone they've known in the physical world? Yes, absolutely. It's kind of like what I was talking about before. It's not only those people, but it's 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 more than that. But, of course, we'll acknowledge and know the others. Plus, um, I've heard people getting greeted by by historical figures, by religious humans, saints, sages, angels. I hear a lot about angels, and I don't do or tap into the angelic realm, but I hear them on the other side talking about that, Jesus. Uh, so they do all talk about greeting people. Okay. You're holding a kangaroo in your profile pic. Hold on. Sarah, do premonitions have anything to do with loved ones who have passed on trying to communicate with you? Do premonitions. Sometimes, sometimes if you get premonitions, it could be someone on the other side who's giving you that information. I think that's what your question is. Um, they could be absolutely, like kind of what I was saying before, giving you that information to tell you, hey, this is what's going to happen. Sometimes they tell us things and we can't change it. Um, and it's just they're giving us the heads up. And it's difficult to know the difference. And Sarah, I have to go check out your your profile pic if you have a kangaroo there. Um, Susan, I also just saw real quick, do I believe in karma? It's so funny. I totally, with every fiber of my being, believe in karma. I know there's something as karma. I've seen it. But, like, I don't, like, for certain people in my life, I'm like, that wasn't enough karma. You know, I try to stay really like love, peace, and happiness, and let be, and whatever. But I'm human, and then sometimes people really piss me off, and I'm like, I can't wait to see the karma. So I'm not gonna lie, I, 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 I believe in it. I know it happens. Um, but when we want karma for someone, it almost is never enough when we're at that level. I'm not saying that's right at all. In fact, the more karma we wish on someone actually bounces back to us and contributes to our negative karma. And I know this and I still am like, I don't care. You know, I don't care. So, you know, we're human. We're working. We're trying. At least I'm trying. Um, but it really isn't good to wish karma on people. They, we all get it one way or the other. So it does. There's a balance in the universe there. Um, oh, I like this one. And again, people that have tuned in, just click like. And um, where you're tuning in from, if this is your first time, also let me know this is your first time. And I'd asked earlier, like, I'm really trying to formulate my future and what, not my future, but like my future classes. And I want to know, like, what do you want to know? What classes do you want? Do what, what can I help you with? What are your challenges that you need guidance and insight and help with? Not just literal help from me. Like, how can I help you help yourself? What is it that you really want to know to, to help you move forward. So Joanne writes, are there any spirits that work against us? There is one energy field that serves to work against you, yourself, an individual, and that is you. There are no external energies that truly serve to work against us. There's no such thing as evil energies, negative spirits, none of that. Uh, none of that at all. I hear people go, oh, gosh, I have to cleanse your soul because you have negative entities attached. And I'm like, oh, my God, I could I could throw something at people. Those are people I wish karma against. But your negative thoughts and your limited thoughts, which come with being human, that's the greatest energy field and force that we have to work against. So if you were taught that you weren't smart, whether it was because your sibling was smarter than you or your parents couldn't recognize your smartness or uh, school didn't really serve you in the way that you needed, whatever it is, if you felt not bright and not smart, and then that over time translated into I'm not capable I'm not going to mount him very much. That negativity in your life is what's going to run everything until you break it. That's the stuff my uh, energy transformation awareness class. I be make you become extremely aware of those negative things uh, that you're not even conscious of 
and how they're holding you back. So any negative spirits that work against us, literally not at all. People in our lives here bring challenges to us. There's hurt and harmfulness to people here. There's evil energy here. People who are just really like they don't, they're just terrible people. Uh, yeah, that exists here, but there, that is not of spirit. That's of human formulation. So the only one, and, and everyone can remember that, the, the most powerful negative energy in the world is your own negative self-tape to yourself. So you know that saying, be the change you wish to see in the world? That statement is addressing that very problem. Be the change. If you are telling yourself, oh, I'm not bright and I'll never amount to anything, for regardless of what reason, you're going to hold the energy there and you're not going to change it. And the universe, God, highest power, it likes expansion. It likes growth. It likes evolution. And any negative thought we carry are the exact opposite of those things. It's contraction. It's it's non-growth. It's stuckness. It's stagnation. And there is nothing in nature that thrives on stagnation forever. Stagnation eventually transforms into something else. We do have the power to, to move along our stagnation. Oh, let's see. Poughkeepsie and Gardner. Ooh, someone's eating Captain Crunch. Thank you. From one sugar addict to clearly another. I wish I had Captain Crunch. Um, let's see. Oh, James is tuning in from the Insane Asylum of Middletown. That sounds just about right. Uh, Patricia from Florida. Oh, my gosh. Jael. Oh, my gosh. How are you? Uh, let's see. I'm just pulling. I'm going through Mary. Thank you for your congratulations. Dennis from South Carolina. Hello. I always feel like I'm freaking romper room right here. I see Dennis and Margaret and Mary. Um, Ravina. I see you, Tanya. Ravina. That is where I got a ticket from. Well, not one, several um, speeding tickets along the thruway, and I had to go to Ravina. Um, so let's see. Pine Island. First time you're here. You saw me at West Hills, Maria. Um, excellent. Excellent. If you'd like to get a reading. I know there's never appointments. Um, you know, what is so crazy. I had two people in this week who got an appointment last month. One of them canceled it. They were like, I don't really need an appointment. They just got one and then they canceled it and they were open, you know, it opened up for someone else. And then I got another woman who got an appointment twice and she didn't take twice. We don't let people, I don't let people come back within six months. And usually even that I think is too soon. Um, but two people this month got two appointments for themselves within a month. And I say, okay, first of all, you were meant to be here. Um, second, it just shows me like, oh my gosh, people who don't, who you haven't gotten an appointment yet. It's not your time. And I know that sounds really annoying. Like, oh, shut up, Deborah. You're just saying that. But I believe that it, it'll happen when it's your time. No doubt about it. Um, okay. Do Lauren, that's a good question. Um, do all people who pass give signs or try to be around humans? I like the way you phrase that. Try to be around humans because my gosh, I try not to be around humans. <laughs> I think I'm more like a hermit. I really like my being home, but, um, it's not that they try to be around humans. It's just that they are because it's their consciousness itself. So, um, yes. All people who cross do give signs. Some are way better than others. What is that about? Usually their personality. If um, if they were very big and bold and loud and present in life, they tend to have bigger, bolder signs. Um, although that's not even like a blanket thing. It's It varies for everyone. Um, and they're always around us. Because we still carry them in one way or another around us, through our thoughts, through our emotions, through photos around our home. Uh, so that's how they are attracted to us, through our consciousness, attracting them into theirs. Mm, okay, someone said, I like the questions on reincarnation, but I haven't seen any of the questions yet on reincarnation. So let me scroll back for a minute. I 
haven't seen one, but I see from Noreen, you m mentioned about dreams um, with the love with your loved ones and you physically felt they were there and hugging you and the significance of that. That's a visitation. When you have a dream and they feel real and and the dream feels really, really good when you're in it, that's a visitation dream. Patricia, happy birthday. No doubt, I'm sorry to hear your twin brother passed. Um, no doubt he is around you. No doubt. Because they're going, the minute we think of our loved ones, it's like calling them up on the phone or sending a text to them. The minute, just through our thoughts, the minute something rests, we, it's like we send a signal out to the universe to connect with them. And similarly, anytime just a memory pops into our mind, or something just sort of pops up into our life, I always say that's like them sending us a text or giving us a phone call saying like, hey, just checking in on you. So um, it's it's very it's very simple, actually. And I think humans have made it um, difficult because we, we, I don't think we're taught properly, to be totally honest. I think we have made this mediumship and consciousness um, as if it's something other than ourselves. And only some people can do it and certain people are good at it. And that's not true. We all have antennas and we all are energy and we're all uh, intuitive to our own people. I'm not saying that everyone is a medium for other people. I'm not saying that. Like, and I always use the analogy, we can all sing technically, but not all of us can win a Grammy for singing. So it's kind of the same. We all have this intuition and this connection to our own people. We just can't all do it for other people. And I think people like myself who do do it for other people, I um, I interviewed John Holland recently and James Ron Prague, which we still have not even put up yet. Um, and both had mentioned that a medium's life is a life of service. And I loved that because it really put it in perspective. I'm like, it really is. It's a service to humanity. And I just feel like, oh, my God, how lucky am I that I'm being used in that way? I love that. Okay. Oh, Sue. Thank you, Sue Schwartz, for tuning in for the first time in Hopewell Junction. Um, Boston Spa, first time. I'm going to be up in the Albany area. I'm back. I'm back up there. Spread the news. I'm, I don't know how often I'll be back. So January 23rd, I have a show at the Cohoes Music Hall in Cohoes um, with Brian and Chrissy and Jess Sims from WGNA. I will be on their show actually, oh my gosh, Wednesday or Thursday morning this week. So all everyone upstate New York, check out my website for tickets on that event. Um, okay. Tuning in. I thought someone said I, I need help dating. That's not what they said. Although I can help you with that too. Not that I'm going to help. I'm not going to date you. I could just help you change your energy field and your mindset so that you can change. Oh, Donna. Oh my gosh, Donna. Of course I remember your gorgeous blondie son, Christopher. Um, I hope, I, Donna, if you're, I remember you're upstate. Um, Coho's Music Hall, how are you? His picture is still hanging up in my center. So of course I remember you. It's so good to hear from you. I have an angel from, for my Christmas tree from you. I think of Christopher every year because I hang that angel up on my tree. So and you have the most amazing handwriting of anyone I've ever met. So, of course I remember you, Don. I'm so happy to see you here. Um, and Donna Peak also writing about the triple threes. Absolutely. That's like a little wink for you. I call them winks even better um, than signs. It's a little wink. Loretta from Nanuet. Every once in a while I see Greg. Um, oh, my God. I'm going to use the word. My fiancé, Greg, um, has has written to you guys so you can all write to Greg and say hi to Greg for sure I'm ignoring them but <laughs> uh, Lynn from Long Island NASA New York from Gladys hello um thank you Sharon how are you Sharon I love I'm not taking down my sign that you gave me for the holidays um okay I'm just looking for questions want to come to meditation um your daughter wants to come. To, oh my gosh, answer that. No, you can come to meditation. Your family is disruptive. They have broke down my firewall many times, but 
maybe they're going to help me strengthen my firewall. So please come to Meditation Antonetta. And that's another thing. I meditation every other Sunday night at my center. I do one online once a month or so. So you can sign up for those. Okay. Ooh, someone was just going to make butter noodles. <laughs> okay. Oh, I hope Maya Angelou, gre Maya Angelou greets me too, is what I'm trying to say, Maria. I hope Mother Teresa greets me also, because I need to talk to her. I'm going to be like, listen, I know you cursed, Mother Teresa. I know you were pissed. You got pissed. There's no, no way Mother Teresa stayed calm and beautiful all the time. No way. So I need to have that conversation with her. L.A. is in the house. Oh, my gosh. Um, ah, I sound like Jerry Maguire. How can I help you? Energy awareness, Lori, this is good to see you. Okay, yep, three negative spirits, me, myself, and I. That's right, Cindy. Okay, you guys are so fun. Bluetooth in the, Bluetooth in the shower? You've been tuning in in the shower. Actually, a shower is a very great place to meditate and connect with the other side. I know that sounds like, what? I don't want Uncle Stan to see me naked. Uncle Stan doesn't give a shit if you're naked, but... Water is a conductor of energy, so um, I tend to get most of my information when I'm in the shower before my day. Um, Creeper Squad is in the house tonight. Oh, hello, Maddie Boyle. How are you? Of course I know who you are. You went to Burke. I know that. Uh, okay. Okay. Do you have people come through? Jennifer, what is this? Jennifer, do you have people come through to do readings at your shows like in Cahos? Do I have people come through to do readings? Um, I, people will, that's what the shows are. People are coming through very much like John Edwards' Crossing Over show, um, Lisa Williams, all the mediums now, they, they, we do this in large forms. So, um, yeah, people will come through. That's, that is not this. That is more demonstration of your loved ones. Um, coming through with proof. I always say, um, I like proof. I'm not going to stand up there and go, oh, gosh, I have your mom here. And oh, she's just lovely. And she says she loves you. Like, I won't say that. That is, is not the messages. I like to say this morning when you ch tripped over the dog and you spilled grape juice all over your white carpet, your mom was there. And then you can ask me, really? Well, why'd she like not warn me about that? So that's all of my events, and I'm doing less and less events right now for the next six months. I am really scaling down my gallery events so that I can put more time into some other things that I want to work on. So you will see me a lot less in these larger venues right now. Okay, what does it mean from Lisa? Those of you joining, I have to keep remembering Make sure you click like, um, make sure you also write if this is your first time tuning in and where you're tuning in from, because I love to read it all afterwards. Um, what's it mean when a loved one passes and we don't ever receive a sign from them? That's a great question. Um, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean they didn't cross over. Uh, I have an aunt who, before she passed, it was very, very funny. And she had said to my mom and myself and my sibling, um, please don't contact me when I'm done. I don't want to come back. I don't want to contact anyone. I'm going to be like in Aruba and that's it. And I'm not going to bring signs. I'm not going to let you guys know. Please don't. We laughed. We thought that was so funny. And she's right. Like I try to dial her up for my own purposes. And I'm like, really, Aunt Grace? Where the hell are you? Can you give me something? So she doesn't typically every once in a while, and I mean maybe three times in the 15 years she's passed, I'll get a something from her, a little thing. But it could just be their personality, but it doesn't mean they didn't cross over. It doesn't mean anything negative. Um, maybe they just don't want to. Having said that, that doesn't mean they're not caring about or acknowledging your own grief. Because a lot of people will go, I can't believe that. Well, I'm really pissed at my spouse because they're not letting me know they're here. They must not have loved me or anything like that. It's, it doesn't work like that at all. At all. 
I just saw something what Christine Service wrote. I don't know what it's referring to, but it made me laugh. I won't repeat it, but, um, oh, yeah. See, Maria, great question. Has anyone who ever passed ever, oh, anyone who passed over ever talked about seeing God? Yes. I mean, that is kind of really what the essence of my book is about, the concept of God, the concept of God as I've understood it from the, I don't know, 20,000 readings over the last 20 years. Um, it's a concept. So is it like the white haired guy on a cloud? Not from what I've heard. It's not, I'm not saying that perception is wrong either, but it's not how I've heard it. Um, but it, it's more about the energy field of known as God. I always refer to God as the universe. That's just my word that I use, but to me, they're interchangeable. So yeah, they absolutely do. And to me, through them, it's a consciousness, a state, and the collective whole. It is all of our energies, us here in physical form, those who have once been in physical form and are just existing as consciousness itself, including plants and animals and water molecules, anything life-affirming, rocks. Uh, it's, it's all of it. So, yeah, they talk about that all the time, which is why I feel like I have pretty cool sense of a lot, <laughs> a real, a lot. And my goal is because we're still here in physical form, I keep wondering, all right, I hear that they're fine all the time. I hear about how they've gone through their life review and they understand what their purpose was here in life. They understand who was in their life for all the reasons, good, bad, and indifferent. They understand what experiences they've had and why. And they're at peace with all of it. So I think to myself, okay, so if we're all going to exist like that when we cross over, why can't we get closer to that state in physical form? And that's what my book is about. It's it's literally, I'm in the presence of proof of an afterlife every day, but it's also kind of a guide to how to create that state of heaven here on earth. Because I don't find this realm all that fun. I really don't. I, I don't think this is easy most of the time. It gets better knowing knowing what you can know and change and morph. But, you know, Central Hudson and fuel bills and nine to five jobs and sick children and sick parents and fights and divorces and you name it, all lumped into a lifetime. And it kind of sucks sometimes. So what do we do with that? suck. <laughs> now I've like depressed all of you and you're all going to hang up and leave here because they're like, oh my God, Deborah's so depressing. But the reality is it's not always fun here. So how do we make it better? How do we do that? That's, that is my complete passion and goal and, and I'm obsessed with it for myself, for my kids, for everyone. Okay. Let's see. How are we doing? Is everyone good? Um, let's see. Those of you who don't have my book, you can get it on Amazon. For those of you who do have my book, could you please leave a review on Amazon? That would be helpful. Um, do, can I turn, let's see. I saw something about turning the gift off. Let's see. Karen, can you turn your gift off? Are you constantly getting bombarded all day long? Totally. I turn it off a lot. It's mostly on off switch. Um, it is very rare for energies to come to me when I'm like not focused on it. And it really is a power of my mind and a, and a focus where I am. And it's, I kind of call it like the curtain. I raise a curtain in my mind of like, okay, show's over. Okay. Show's on. Having said that I have through the years had people come through. In fact, Antonetta who mentioned that she wanted to come to meditation, but her family is too disruptive. That's kind of a joke, but kind of not because for some reason, a couple of weeks ago at my meditation class, during meditation, I felt two people from the other side, and I kept telling them, like, okay, you need to go because this is meditation. It's not a gallery. I'm not doing readings. I'm not bringing people through, and they would not leave, and I was, like, starting to sweat in meditation, and I have to talk during meditation. I'm, I'm leading 30 people in a guided meditative experience. And my brain was caught up in hearing them. So all of a sudden I'd have like five minutes of silence and I'd be like, oh my God. And 
And then imagine you're on a cloud. And then I'm like, back to these two. And it was making me crazy. And that doesn't normally happen. So we, I brought everyone back in. They were like, man, you were quiet for a long time. And I'm like, yes, I was. Here's why. These two people came through. And it was Antonetta and her daughters. Um, I forget who this time. And I said, oh, my God, they broke my firewall. firewall. I have a firewall <laughs> where I say, nope, you can't come through until I'm ready, until I've set the intention. But her family broke my firewall. And then, what was it, Sunday? It was yesterday. I had a private group because I, I take groups and I do lead private groups at my center. And I had six siblings come in. And that morning before their session, their mother would not leave me alone that morning until I spoke to them. So she was loud. She was forceful. And I don't know how she broke through my firewall either, but that's definitely more the rare experience than the norm. Every once in a while, I'll be out in public and I'll get like something, but I really don't pay attention to it. I never walk up to anybody in public um, only because I just don't believe in that. I think it's super unethical to do it. So I don't do that. But but thank goodness, I typically don't. Um, Melissa. Well, I, my book go on Audible soon. Funny you should say that. So here's what happened to that. I spent all of October in this very studio recording my book. I read the book for the 900,000th millionth time, and I spoke it into here, and I saved it, and I sent it off, and I recorded the whole thing. And it took, I think it wound up being like 40 hours of, of reading, and I never realized how difficult it is to read something. And then I'd mess up, but I, they told me, like, just keep going, and then you could just fix it. We'll edit it. Like, okay, I'll just keep going. So the blooper reel of my book must be hilarious because... I will be reading and I'll go, I spent a week at Omega in July 2007. Shit. Oh, shit. And I like, so I think the blooper reel will be way more worth than the real copy. Anyway, I recorded the whole thing. I sent it off and the technician listening to it, the editor said, your mic was up too loud. We can hear your stomach growling and all sorts of background noises and you have to re-record it. So I was like, okay, F the audio copy right now. So I will get back to it, but it was so draining to me to do it. And I do believe it should be in my voice and I want it to be in my voice. Um, but because I set so much aside time, you know, aside time for it and then it couldn't happen, I was like pissed. Yeah, I was so not spiritual that day because I was like, I wish I knew that in chapter four and not at the very end. But eventually, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see. Elvis Duran has not called yet. I think we should still send him messages. Um, because I haven't heard anything from Elvis Duran in the Z Morning Zoo, and that would be fantastic if they do. Um, let's see, let's see. I still have to keep checking my text that I told my son who's upstairs um, to text me if he wasn't feeling well enough. He's probably, hopefully he's falling asleep. Um, let's see. Oh, Greg sent me something. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Cat. Cat asks something about, do I think everyone on 9-11 has passed? I didn't see this question as I was scrolling through before. But um, absolutely, I do think they were supposed to pass. Um, and I know people will go, why? That's ridiculous. I don't mean supposed to as humans. I mean their soul. It, that was the day their body was supposed to leave this planet. Now, here is a great discussion about um, when our time is and how interconnected we all are to each other all the time, including all of the, every molecule in the universe. Events like that, the major tsunamis in Japan a couple years back, uh, where 250,000 people died because of one tsunami. Events like 
these huge catastrophic events where a large number of people pass. That is literally like the tsunamis. The universe's way of co-creating with those 250,000 people who happen to be in a generalized same area on the planet, it was their day to go. Something had to happen for that, that meaning their day to go, to happen. In that case, it was a tsunami. So that is the earth literally working with our energy field. 9-11, at the hands of a madman, absolutely. 3,000 people had to die that day in one area of Manhattan and Pentagon and, and those airplanes. Something had to happen. All those people, it was their day to go, and they were on the planet in the same spot. So everything works together, including the people behind 9-11 their brain, that's an example of evil in human form. They are um, anyone who causes harm deliberately to anyone is evil. But it is also the universe is co-conspiring and working together. And that's the stuff we know when we pass over. So when we talk about we're all one and we are all connected, we need to really expand the way we think about this and understand this. We are all one because now that the, let's see, how many of you are still on? Almost 100 of you, 92 of you are still on right now. It, 92 of us are connected in one way right now. That means our people are connecting on the other side just because we're connecting. And you might say, yeah, but you don't even know I'm on. You haven't read anything by me. But we're connected because you're listening to my voice and you're paying attention to me. So we really need to start thinking in much broader terms on how we can connect, in what ways we connect, that we are all one, that yes, there is negative and evil energy here. And do we want to contribute to that negativity, that evil, or do we not? And how do we not? These are the things as humans that we can, that we do have control over. Um, ooh, Wendy is watching from North, the beaches of North Carolina. <sighs> Is it warm? I'm, I'm going to Georgia this weekend with my son. We are looking at Life University in Georgia. And I was checking the, the weather and it was like 45 degrees. I was like, what the heck? I thought it was supposed to be like really warm. But I'll take 45 over what we have now. But um, I hope that I can experience a little bit of a taste of warmer weather. Um, let's see. Ma, I haven't read the whole thing here. Kara writes, um, I've done readings where mom has and has not chosen to connect. It would be interesting to do this together sometime as I believe Jerry and Jane would definitely be nearby each other. Um, I don't know who those people are, but sometimes people come through a session and sometimes they don't. And sometimes your mom will come in one session and then another time you come back um, and it's dad that only connects. So it's pretty fascinating. Um, sometimes dad never speaks and it's only mom and vice versa. It's, it is pretty amazing how, how you just don't know. All right, let's see. Albany, thank you so much. You're coming to Cohoes. That's fantastic. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to be at the Cohoes Music Hall January 23rd. And, uh, I don't know when we're going to be back up there. So I hope I can, can reconnect with so many of you up there because I'm so excited to be back with Brian and Chrissy. Ah, uh, you guys are laughing over my stomach growling story. Um, Christine, service. Do I write a personal message in each book when, uh, when people order them? When you order it from Amazon, it comes directly from Amazon, so I don't even touch those. Um, but if you order it from my office, every once in a while, like over the holidays, I released a personalized copy and that's very specialized. That's when I literally tune into the receiver's name and I just want their first and maybe middle name. And I tune in and I give you an intuitive message for those books. Um, I don't have them available all the time though. I usually kind of open them up as they come, like, you know, 25 at a time. Um, maybe around Valentine's all day, I'll do that. Um, I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do that in Valentine's Day, but that's a personalized, intuitive message. Um, if you order it from my office and you request it to be signed, of course I'll do that. And I write a little message. 
kind of generic. I try to tune in a little bit, but it's not anything detailed by any means. But yes, if you order it through my office, I will absolutely sign them. I used to, as a kid, visualize signing my name over and over and over and over. And I just find it pretty amazing um, that I have signed my name over and over and over. Visualization completely, uh, completely works. I could tell you that. Uh, Rita asks, can soul from 9-11 tell us the truth about what happened or spirits in general shed truth on certain situations? Absolutely. They can. They do often. Um, I think I've talked about in the past on my YouTube channel, I had a little documentary done about a little boy who was missing and allegedly his, uh, mom's boyfriend had killed him and that I was brought in on that case and how he was found and all of that. So that he shed light on his whereabouts in that particular segment. I don't have a lot of experience working with the police or in that capacity. Um, not sure I really enjoy it so much because that's that just a whole other level of mediumship that that maybe I just haven't done it enough on that level. Uh, but they often shed light on what really happened, positively and negatively. A lot of times people believe or think that their family member has committed suicide and it really wasn't. Sometimes they've shed light where they didn't think they have uh, intended it and they did. So it, it varies. Okay. Ooh, 111. I had that question this morning, actually. Um, your son wants to go April to life. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So I'll have to, that's like a little wink for you and your son that, that that's coming up that uh, you should look into it too for him. So good luck to you on that. And if you reach out to me in a couple of days to ask me, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, Maria, what does it mean to keep seeing 1111? Um, there are so many different schools of thought on 1111. Some are like Doreen Virtue talks about it's an angelic message and it's a uh, wink. That's my word from the angelic realm. I don't personally know enough about the angelic realm, so I don't feel connected to that answer, but that doesn't mean that it's not the angelic realm. I just don't know enough. I always feel that if it's not literally like the birth date or the death date of someone yourself or someone you love, um, then it, it's usually just like you're a reminder to be present, get present, and realize that like, we're exactly where you are is exactly where you're meant to be. That's always how I interpret it. But there's so many interpretations that people say, no, that's my uncle Joe, or um, no, that means this to me. So whatever it means to you is what it means also. Um, all sorts of dates and times and repetitive numbers come through. But Doreen Virtue is the woman you probably want to look up because she has a lot of information on on all repetitive numbers, what 111 means, 222, so on and so forth. So if you really want more information about it, you should totally tune into her. Um, yeah, who was behind 9-11 that day? Uh, we know our own government has their hands dirty. Um, I want to still work, so I don't want to say anything about that. I don't want to, like, you know, have anyone knocking on my door. That I believe the truth always comes out in the end. There's no way. I Do I know? I really don't know. I'm joking. I really don't. I've never plugged into that. I've never even asked anyone from 9-11 on that, of that question. Um, if, their par if their loved ones aren't asking it, I'm not asking them. So I don't really engage with them on the other side for my own purposes. Um, but yeah, everyone has their theories, but I do believe the truth always comes out in the wash. Sometimes we have to, um, wait for it, unfortunately, like karma. Sometimes we just have to wait for it. Uh, first time Mary from Middletown, you came across a book, purchased three for Christmas gifts. The message you gave were as much a gift as the book itself. I now need to purchase one for myself so I can read it too. That's awesome. Excellent. So I'm glad I, I really enjoyed doing the personal, um, intuitive questions or not questions, personalization of the books, because I really tune in to the recipient. I ask the purchaser to give me the, the name of the person who's receiving the book. And I just plug into their name and I just like quotes were coming through and, and songs. And, um, I don't know. I just really enjoyed sitting down and doing that process. All right. We're going to start wrapping up a little bit here. Um, 
Casey, was... do you think children can feel or speak to past loved ones? Absolutely. Particularly children before school age. So three, four, we start to see um, that connection kind of fade a little bit. Doesn't ever end, but we see it fade. Um, but absolutely, children are experiencing uh, the other side. My ex-husband is calling me right now. Um, delete. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Kids are super intuitive because they have not been taught that so-and-so when they died, they're not here anymore. They don't, they don't have that. I always tell people mediumship is very, very similar to the feeling of when we're using our imagination. What do I mean? All of a sudden, when I close my eyes and I'm tuning into someone, I literally have to trick my brain still after almost 20 years of doing this, I have to trick my brain into saying, okay, let's pretend there's people here. I have to use the word pretend to my own self. I don't say it out loud to people so that my logical mind goes, oh, you want to play pretend? Okay, I'll let you. And my logical mind goes over here and my intuitive side is able to connect. So it feels very much like using your imagination, which children have a wonderful imagination and they can just, there's no limitations in their little minds. They're way more brilliant than any one of us adults who have learned such ridiculous patterns and we keep living those patterns out, which is exactly what my book is about. My book is not only about the other side, it's about us here and how we're wired and how when we understand more clearly how we're wired, we can start changing our life trajectory and our quality of our life here so that we don't have to wait to feel so wonderful after we're past. We don't want that. So children, absolutely. Uh, oh, I like this question too. Maria, again, um, with permission from parents, would you ever consider doing classes for children to help them foster an understanding about the afterlife? I keep going back and forth on this. <sighs> It's a tricky one for me because on one level, all children are intuitive, but I don't, I don't know if, like how many, it, when I said before that John Edward or John Holland, I'm sorry, and, and James Von Prague said mediumship is a life of service. When a kid is like 12, they don't yet really know that this is what they want to do. So I'm reluctant to teach them with this, if that's not really their trajectory, because a lot of times I am concerned that it is more their parents putting more on them than what's really happening. So I don't feel totally comfortable yet with that. I want to make sure it's really coming from within. That's why I kind of like to work with people late twenties and beyond because they're just, they're, they're, they've had enough life experiences to know what they want themselves or even to know that you don't know what they want. Um, I do do meditation classes for teens. I invite teens to come to all my meditation classes and all my workshops, absolutely. But uh, as far as teaching them more about mediumship and the afterlife, I haven't, I haven't felt totally connected with that for me, for me, for me to teach it to others because I want it to come from them. All right. I always say like, okay, I'm going to do one more question, but then I, your questions are so great that I want to read them. Cat again, it's cat. Um, why do people burn sage in a house before reading? Sage is like a light, a long-term um, purifier. So literally there's been studies that they find that sage literally purifies the air. So like if someone's sick, it purifies it's like, it's like that antiseptic stuff, only natural. So it's a purifier of the air. I don't believe any of those things are really, really needed. Um, I like to use chimes or bells to clear the energy. In between every single reading I do at my center, I ring a chime so that I clear the room of all everyone else's old energy and I wait to bring in that next person. I also have bells hanging on the door when you enter my center because every time the bells ring, it clears the energy in the center. It doesn't mean like it makes everybody go away. It just clears the energy. So I like that way. But some people like sage. I don't like the smell of sage. That's that's the only reason why I don't use it. Okay. 
I saw something about impending doom. Let's see. Christina, how are we doing, everybody? Okay, we're starting to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up soon. Um, is that feeling of impending doom something we should listen to, or is it anxiety and bad energy that someone needs to try to turn around? It's hard to say. It could be one. It could be both. If that's something that you experience often, that is more likely to be a symptom of anxiety. And obviously, I'm not a, a psychiatrist or a therapist in that level or a medical person, so I'm not diagnosing anybody right now. Um, but if it's a repetitive thing and constant, I would look into it as being more of an anxiety issue. Um, if it's all of a sudden comes out of the blue, um, even then I don't want to totally say that it's definitely not bad energy. It's definitely not bad energy on the other side. It could be information. It could be information that you need to know about yourself. It could be this feeling of impending doom, um, for the world. It's, it's hard to say. So I wouldn't. I don't want to, I don't want to like answer this and have people go, oh my God, I'm impending doom right now. I'm freaking out. So, um, I would monitor yourself on what that means and when it's occurring. Is it out of the blue? Is it happening often? Um, a lot of times we are un, not a lot of times, I'd say 99% of the time we are unconsciously triggered. Um, I always have an example I get my nails done every two weeks. I do not watch television in my house. I do not have it on. I hate it. I hate extra noise. I will not have news playing. I just think the, I just don't like the way media and news feels to me, let alone hears. So I hate it. But when I get my nails done, it's on. And every time I leave that place, I am so jacked up and so so messed up where I'm either totally anxious or totally angry. One of the way, one or the other. Not to mention that I'm also really tall. My legs don't fit under that little table that they have me in. That's a whole other thing. But I freak out. I feel like, oh my God, I'm crawling out of my skin. And I have trained myself to prepare myself for that. You can say, why don't you go to a different place? This particular place is always empty. So I'm not going to tell you where it is. So I don't have to wait to get my nails done. But it's a unconscious trigger and it creates this feeling of anxiety in me. So I, my point is to is really check in with, with what, um, what the, where it's coming from. And it could be an unconscious trigger. All right, let's see. I think I'm going to end it here. Um, I will go over now a lot of your questions, click like and respond quickly to things that I can, if it's a quick answer Every Monday I do this. I'm trying to think of what next Monday's day. Every Monday at 8, I post it, share it, let me know. Um, if you have things that come up during the week that you're like, oh, yeah, I really want you to talk about this, uh, send it to me. Um, don't forget my book. It's in the presence of proof on Amazon. I am just proud that I got it done. I love what it's teaching. I love the feedback I'm getting on it. So I'm so beyond grateful that people are interested in my work. Again, I have meditation at my class, my center. The next one is a morning meditation, I believe, on January 27th. I have a vision board workshop on February 17th at my center, and I'm only taking about 20 people for that class because I like to start keeping the classes more intimate. Um, and then I have my energy awareness, energy transformation awareness workshop starting in March for six weeks, and that's an intensive, intensive interpersonal, personal growth, understanding in the beginning of learning how energy flows to your body. That first day, I will have you feeling the flow of energy in your own hands, uh, transferring energy back and forth. So that one's huge. It'll be on my website probably by Friday this week. So that starts March 30th. So I uh, want to thank you all for tuning in and I'm going to see you next Monday. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.